guys, this is your Tita in China and today we are back with a new skincare video. Today we're going to start a series of skincare videos that I will entitle Ingredient Spotlight. In these videos, we're going to talk about skincare ingredients, what they do, what's the science backing them up, and what to look for in a skincare product so that you will get the benefit from those skincare ingredients. Today we're going to talk about two skincare ingredients, both of which are B vitamins. One is Pantenol, which is pro-vitamin B5, and niacinamide, which is vitamin B3. But before we move on, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Emeline, and I am your Tina in China. I am currently based in China, and I come up with skincare-related videos, as well as China-related videos. So if you're interested in any of that, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and hit the little bell notification so that you will know the next time I will upload a new video. First, let's talk about Pantenol. Pantenol is also called Pro-Vitamin B5 and we call it a Pro-Vitamin because it's going to be converted by your body or by your skin into Vitamin B5. So technically, it's not yet a Vitamin B5 but it will be converted once it's ingested or applied. It functions basically as a humectant and as I've said before in my previous videos, humectants are substances that draw water to themselves. So if you're going to put humectants on your skin, it's going to draw water into your skin. But what's unique about Pantenol is that it is also an emollient, meaning it soothes out or it smoothens out the rough edges of skin cells, making them look lustrous and more hydrated. Pantenol has been around for a very, very long time in skincare and hair care. And I guess one of the most famous examples of Pantenol in hair care is Pantene. When used on hair, Pantenol can actually smooth out and lessen the friction in between hair, making it less frizzy. When applied to the skin, it has anti-inflammatory and specific it reduces the redness that is related to inflammation. And this is the reason why it's a very good healing ingredient when added to things like acne medication or even things like diaper rash medications as well as eczema medication or eczema moisturizers. It does this by signaling the skin to produce new cells so that you will be able to create a stronger skin barrier. Because Pantenol is relatively cheap as an ingredient and it does a lot of things as a humectant and an emollient, it actually is a very good um, additive for serums, for moisturizers. Whenever the formulator wants to add something nourishing and something healing for the skin. Not only that, another good thing about Pantenol is that it plays very well with other skincare ingredients. It doesn't destabilize or it doesn't really go against any other skincare ingredients. You can use Pantenol with retinol. As a matter of fact, it's a very good partner with retinol because retinol can sometimes cause inflammatory reactions on the skin as you're getting used to the product. So adding Pantenol to your routine if you're using retinol is actually a very good move. And because of its healing and anti-inflammatory properties, anyone can really use it, even sensitive skin types. Even babies actually. And skincare manufacturers love to add Pantenol because even at a low concentration, 1-5% to is enough for you to get the benefit of Pantenol. And unlike other emollients, Pantenol is actually not greasy. Unlike other oils, Pantenol is not greasy, it's not oily. And you can actually put this into products that you are specifically producing for hot and humid countries like the Philippines. One thing that you do need to remember about Pantenol is that it is a good moisturizer but it is not very occlusive. Meaning, it doesn't really do much for transepidermal water loss. Which is the process where moisture from your skin evaporates because there's no real barrier that keeps it in. And yes, transepidermal water loss happens whether or not you're naturally oily skinned or if you're dry skinned. It happens to all of us. So everyone really needs to have a moisturizer in their skincare routine. It's just that we need to use different kinds of moisturizers that suit our skin type so that we will not feel greasy, that our pores will not get clogged up, and that we will get the same kind of glowing skin without having to sacrifice comfort. So for this video, I actually went through my skincare products and I realized that all of the Pantenol containing products that I have are already featured in a previous video that I made which is the Centella Asiatica video. So I will put snippets of that here and put all of the products in the description box. This one from Causar X and this is their Balantium Comfort Ceramide Cream and this product is also combined with Vitamin B5 or Pantenol. 
Latino, which is another ingredient that promotes wound healing. Centella Aqua Soothing Ampule. This was very thoughtfully formulated. Also uses pantenone or vitamin B5, which promotes wound healing, as well as allantoin, which is very soothing and very calming for your skin. The Dr. Belner Sika Peptide Ampule. This product also has allantoin and beta-glucan, both of which are very soothing ingredients, as well as niacinamide and pantenone. Dr. Chart Sika Pear Cream really just locks in all of the moisture in your skin. The next two products are from the Korean brand Apeyu and it's the Matic Acicide Cream and the Matic Acicide Gel. Very thoughtfully formulated with an additional wound healing ingredient which is pantenol. This one is the gel. Also has pantenol and zinc. This is the Cicaplast Balm B5. Also doesn't have any fragrance. It's good for all skin types. In all of those products in our previous video, I have spoken about how pantenol works very well with Centella Asiatica because both products or both skincare ingredients actually do the same thing. They reduce inflammation, reduce redness, and help skin repair itself. The next ingredient we're going to talk about is niacinamide and it is another B vitamin. This time it's vitamin B3. Sometimes in skincare products, it can also be listed as nicotinamide. Now, niacinamide has also been around for a really long time. It has robust scientific studies that back it up and more and more skincare products are including niacinamide in their formulations. Just like pantenol, niacinamide is also not super expensive for the formulator to add in their formula. And just like pantenol, it is effective even at a pretty low concentration, like 2 to 4%. Now, there are studies that suggest that 2% niacinamide is already effective, but for the most part, studies have used 4% niacinamide, and this is where I would also put my recommendation on at least 4% for you to be able to get the full benefit of the product. Just like pantenol, niacinamide is generally Generally good for all skin types. However, some sensitive skin types may experience a tingling or a stinging sensation when they first use niacinamide. Niacinamide can help with wound healing but I would suggest that if you are having a rosacea attack or an eczema attack to hold off on the niacinamide. And that is because niacinamide does have a slight drying effect because it decreases the amount of sebum that you produce. Now this is where it gets a little bit tricky when understanding niacinamide. It says in many studies that niacinamide can actually help dry skin because it minimizes transepidermal water loss. However, it does have a sebum decreasing effect on the skin. So it can also help oily skin people. So it is an effective hydrator for dry skin people and it is also an effective oil control ingredient for oily skin people. Having said that, what really will count when it comes to the products that you're going to buy are the other ingredients that the niacinamide is mixed with. So for example, if the niacinamide is formulated with ceramides, with other types of moisturizers, obviously this is targeted towards those with drier sensitive skin. But if the niacinamide is formulated with things like salicylic acid or benzoyl peroxide, then obviously this is targeted towards more oily skin people. So you should check what other ingredients the niacinamide is formulated with so that you will know whether or not this product is good for you or not. Remember, niacinamide that is formulated with other ingredients like ceramides, um, occlusives like petrolatum or dimethicone would be niacinamide that is better for um, dry skin types, sensitive skin types, while niacinamide that is formulated with things like salicylic acid or mattifying powders or benzoyl peroxide will be targeted more towards people who are oily and acne prone. There are several studies that prove that niacinamide is good for acne because niacinamide's effect is actually comparable to clindamycin's effect without the antibacterial resistance. There are a couple of studies that show that people with the same severity of acne, one group took um, niacinamide topically while the other group took a clindamycin which is a common anti-acne antibiotic that is given to um, reduce the inflammation on the skin. If I remember correctly, the study went on for 12 weeks and the researchers found out that the effect of niacinamide is the same as the effect of the clindamycin. So in both groups, the clindamycin group and the niacinamide group, both of them experienced less irritation, less inflammation, and a calming down of their acne. But researchers found that people who use niacinamide did not encounter antibiotic resistance. 
Another benefit of niacinamide is that it is very good at lightening dark spots and melasma. And when I say dark spots, I mean the dark spots that you get after a pimple has healed. There are some robust evidence that show that 4% niacinamide is actually just as effective as 4% hydroquinone. Hydroquinone is considered the gold standard for reducing dark spots and melasma, but it does have side effects and it's not for everybody. Niacinamide can help with hyperpigmentation and melasma because it is a tyrosinase inhibitor. And tyrosinase, as I have discussed in my video about colorism, is an enzyme that signals the production of melanin. So when niacinamide interrupts or inhibits the action of tyrosinase, then no melanin can be produced and your hyperpigmented spots will lighten up. Product recommendations for niacinamide include this one from The Ordinary, which is a 10% niacinamide and 1% zinc formulation. This is when you just want niacinamide, no bells and whistles, and it's almost just like a booster for your skincare routine. Another similar product is this one from Good Molecules. It is also a niacinamide serum, but it definitely has a lighter texture compared to the one from The Ordinary. My favorite niacinamide products, however, are these two from Drunk Elephant as well as from CeraVe. This one is the CeraVe PM. It is a lightweight moisturizer. It has niacinamide as well as ceramides, which helps maintain the health of your skin barrier. I have used this product before and I really do like the lightweight texture. And I like the fact that because it contains niacinamide, I don't need to add niacinamide as a serum in my routine. It cuts down on the cost of buying extra serums or extra boosters for my skincare routine. However, the CeraVe PM might be a little bit too thick for hot and humid climates like the Philippines. However, I suggest that you just give it a try and see because sometimes we don't realize just how thirsty our skin is and even if we consider ourselves to be not very dry or even oily skin, when you start giving your skin proper nutrition, you realize that it actually can handle that kind of moisturizer. But if you're sure that you want to have a lightweight moisturizer, then this one from the Drunk Elephant, the B-Hydra Intensive Hydrating Serum, is for you. It has niacinamide, panthenol, ceramides, everything really that you will need or you will want in your skincare. Really, this is the only product that I keep repurchasing from them. This is a very solid product, my favorite product in the entire lineup. So that's it guys, that's our video for today. I hope that you enjoyed today's video and found it informative. If you did, please give me a thumbs up or share this video to your friends who are also skincare buffs. Don't forget to leave me a comment down below if you have any questions or suggestions about niacinamide and panthenol products. Or if you have anything to say about what I said in the video, drop me a comment down below. Let's have a conversation. That's all for today guys. See you next time. Bye! Shots again!